She's going to sleep. She's going to sleep. Mother, mother, come on. Mother, have some tea. Come on. A lot of the patients in this hospital who are in the elderly age group, they, they could be managed in their home, I think, by their families. It is only a process of their uh, age. It's a normal process of aging that they get demented, they get confused, and they're incontinent, but they should be looked after in their homes as anywhere else in the world they are. This happens in the East? This happens in all the Oriental countries. Uh, we could uh, refuse to admit patients uh, and there are some hospitals uh, which do so. Uh, here we've decided on uh, a fairly liberal uh, admission policy uh, and as part of this policy, if any general practitioner in the area that we serve uh, wishes to admit a patient here, uh, he is able to do so uh, as of right. Do you think you ought to accept patients when you can't put them up in decent conditions? Under the circumstances we do because knowing our general practitioners as we do, with their knowledge of the hospital, we can be quite sure that the patients, that the condition from which the patients come are, from the patient's point of view, less satisfactory than the conditions to which they're being admitted in this hospital. <laughs> you get hardened to it. <laughs> Tell me about getting hardened. What do you have to get hardened to? Well, when you first come, you know, it's a bit of a do to get into bed with a dormitory full of people. You can't rest, but you get hardened to it. How long have you been here, Harry? 44 years, nearly. You're sure on that, are you? Sure. What, uh, what do you think of being in here? Do you I like hate it? it. Why? Because it's hell. Well, what's hell about it? No one to speak to. A lot of people here. Don't you have any friends? No, you can't speak to any of them. They can't have a conversation with them. Why is that? Mm. They don't understand you. The care and attention which the patients receive is perfectly adequate on a given level. What given level? The level of kindness, the level of adequate physical care. Uh, those are the two, uh, two main uh, levels, as the other one would uh, speak of. Is the level of becoming slowly a cabbage an adequate level of care and attention? Uh, no, this is where one is unhappy uh, about the situation, uh, that long-term patients in hospitals like this uh, do tend to become depersonalized through the institutionalization and the non-stimulating character of their environment uh, in a way which is unnecessary. The floors in certain wards are terrible. They are wooden floors which are really soaking with feces and urine because that those floors have been lying there for years and one could easily put vinyl floors there uh, which would not involve a lot of money. Well, why hasn't this been done before? I couldn't answer that question. You seem almost resigned to the state of these patients. Do you, do you care about them? Uh, my apparent re resignation is a misapprehension on your part. Uh, one is not resigned to these conditions, uh, but one has to make the best of them. And it's no good going around fuming with anger about conditions uh, about which you can do relatively little. Uh, this doesn't do you any good, nor does it do your patients any good. But surely anger gets things done. If you refuse to sit down under these conditions and fume constantly, 
surely something would be done. No, it, it depends whether the right people are getting angry. Well, you're medical superintendent of this hospital. Surely you are the right person to get very angry. It's not much good my getting angry uh, unless I can communicate my anger uh, to the right people. And ultimately the right people are the people who happen to be looking in at this program. Because it's out of their pockets that the money has to come uh, to improve the conditions under which our patients live. The conditions could be improved without money. It wouldn't cost anything to remove name tabs or to use the screens already there when stripping and potting old ladies. Society may be guilty in the way it treats its old people, but the immediate responsibility for the care of these patients and thousands like them in Britain lies with the Dr. Spencers and their management committees. Within this outward uh, uh, appearance of complete depersonalization, uh, there is still an inner core of the real person present. And if you get down and talk to these elderly patients, listen to what they've got to say with your ear to the ground, as it were. You, you hear far more than you expect to hear, and you appreciate that these patients are by no means as depersonalized and deteriorated as they appear to be on the surface. Well, if the real person is still there, don't you think that some of them may find the conditions there less tolerable than you seem to make them out to be? Well, I, I hope I've not made them out to be uh, tolerable. But after all, you know, people can get used to almost anything. Uh, and you could get, get used to living in the uh, annex wards. There's no doubt but that the annex uh, should be pulled down. Uh, it's never built for the purpose it serves today as an active or seeks to serve as an active psychiatric hospital. Say, it was built for pauper lunatics. It cannot, by any stretch of the imagination, be made suitable. And the only thing to do uh, is to pull it down and build in its place small family-sized units containing perhaps 12 or 15 patients where those patients can have the individual and personal attention that they need. Well, this building is now 100 years old, and uh, it's been unsuitable for a very long time. Why hasn't it been pulled down before? Uh, basically, because the community isn't sufficiently interested in this matter to see that it is pulled down. What plans are there for pulling it down in the future? Uh, none, as far as I know. Why not? Well, here you come to the uh, chain of events which really result in the conditions in the annex remaining as they are. Uh, ultimately, these conditions are the responsibility of the community as a whole. Uh, to pull down the annex is an expensive job. We build it. There's just not the money available. But if the community as a whole had its priorities slightly in a different order from what it's got at the moment, the money would be available. When do you think the annex will disappear or be brought up to standard? The annex cannot, in the first place, be brought up to standard. And this applies to an enormous amount of mental hospital building, which we've inherited from the Victorians, uh, and which we've done nothing about replacing. This problem isn't peculiar to this hospital in any way at all. As to when uh, the annex will be replaced, uh, I don't know, nor do I think anybody else knows. We shall just go on and on as we are at present.